let's figure out what functions we're going to need for our sonic screwdriver. The main function is controlling stuff, like a TV remote. And in fact, the technology that's used in a TV remote is used to control a whole bunch of things like LED lights, candles, projectors, really anything with a remote like this with an IR LED on the end that transmits the commands. And if we equip our sonic screwdriver with an IR receiver, which is what each of these devices uses to interpret those commands, we can simply receive a command from a remote, save it, and then issue it from the Sonic to the proper device. Pretty simple, right? So the core of our Sonic will be an IR LED and an IR receiver to record and receive commands. Now we're going to need a smaller Arduino board than anything we've used before, but also one with a good amount of program space so we can store a complex program plus remote codes. So I'm going to get the Ciduino Xiao, which has a large amount of flash storage and 11 pins that can be either digital, analog, or for 10 of them, PW. It does only supply 3.3 volts of power off of each of these pins, so we need to make sure we only use Arduino components that can run off of 3.3 volts. Now, how are we going to control our Sonic? One option would be to have a bunch of buttons, of course, like a traditional TV remote, but none of the Sonic screwdrivers have any more than one button, and I'd like to keep that sleek design. So, we'll need to control it using gestures. Theoretically, with an accelerometer and a gyroscope to detect how much the device is moving, moving and how it's rotating on all three axes, we could have 12 gestures, a movement in each direction, and a rotation in each direction. However, after some experimentation, the pulling up is very similar to the rotating up, and the same with pulling or rotating left, right, and down. You get the idea. So to keep there from being any confusion on which gesture the user wants, we're going to be limited to eight gestures. We'll have a flicking motion to the up, down, right, and left, which we can use for the arrows a remote usually uses to control the TV. We'll also have a rotate clockwise and rotate counterclockwise, which will work nicely for volume up and down. And we'll have the push forward, which makes sense for clicking on something, and the pull back, which makes sense for the back button. And all of this can be done simply by using the MPU6050 accelerometer and gyroscope, which isn't even very expensive. Now, this is quite nice, but we're obviously missing a key function, turning the device on and off. My first thought is we could add a button, but that's a bit boring. Instead, I'm going to add a light sensor that acts as a button. In our code, we can simply check for how long the light sensor loses light, and that is how long our button was pressed. In fact, we can take this further and add three separate inputs for a short tap, a one to two second regular press, and a three to five second long press. The gaps between these lengths should be long enough that the user can't accidentally use the wrong button press. So when we're using the Sonic as a remote, the short press will will serve as the power on off function. Now, the Sonic screwdriver is supposed to be able to control everything, so I'd like to have multiple remote profiles on the device that we can switch between using the regular one to two second press. And I don't want to have to manually program in the remote codes with a computer, as that would defeat the whole magic of it. So let's have another mode where we intake signals from the remotes and we'll switch between these two modes, the scanning mode and the commanding mode, using the three to five second long press. Inside of the scanning mode, we'll once again use the regular press to switch which remote we're on, and to intake a remote signal, we'll first perform a gesture, say flick up, and then it'll wait for us to send the signal of the up button from the remote, and it'll save that for us to use in the commanding mode. This means that each remote stored on the Sonic could use uh, different gestures for different functions. For example, if I want to control this Christmas tree, I can have the clockwise gesture set it to multicolored mode, and the counterclockwise gesture set it to my favorite color, red. Also, the color of the subscribe button, except now it's gray or white or something. Anyway, just make sure to hit it so you don't miss the rest of the Sonic series. Now, the last thing I want to do for the design is make this actually look somewhat like a Sonic screwdriver, which means it needs to have a light at the tip and cool sounds. Since we're going to have multiple remotes, I'd like to use an RGB LED to signify which remote we're on, and also so you can make it the color of your favorite doctor's Sonic screwdriver. So we could have a green, a blue, and a red mode, maybe even a yellow mode, and each of these corresponds to a different remote. That is, I can have red be my TV remote and green be my Christmas tree remote.
camera. And I'll include a piezo speaker or buzzer to play sonic screwdriver sounds or beeping whenever I perform a gesture or press the button. I should probably also add another mode to the sonic screwdriver for just playing around or showing off so I don't always have to be sending out signals turning on and off my TV. This third mode can simply have different sounds or lights associated with most of the gestures. For example, I might use the clockwise rotation to change the color of the sonic to red or yellow or purple. Now for some random reason, the MPU 6050 we're using also has a temperature reader that can give us the current temperature. So when you turn the screwdriver counterclockwise, I'm thinking it'll change the color to between maybe blue or white for very cold, blending to orange or red for very hot. And it can also beep one time for each 10 degrees it is above zero. So five times for between 50 and 59 degrees, which should give you a fairly good idea of the temperature and just adds another cool feature to the Sonic. And we don't want to forget a battery casing to power the Sonic. I've chosen a three AAA holder that will supply four and a half volts to our Xiao board, which is inside the 3.3 to five volt range specified in the docks. So here are the finalized components of our design. And you can see a little bit of the shape I'm going for. We have a three prong LED setup at the top with two RGB LEDs for show and an IR LED for controlling stuff, an IR receiver on one side and a light sensor on the other. And inside the Sonic, we've got our piezo speaker right above the Xiao board and the MPU 6050 to read all of our gestures. And at the bottom, the battery case with three triple A's in it. I'm going to order up all of these components. So join me in the next video right here and we'll put it together.